Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today I want to show you our Italian bill, which is a sweet weapon from the 16th century. Stay tuned. So the Italian bill is clearly a pole arm uh, that derived from an agricultural implement. Uh, in Italy, there's a tool called a saccharis dating back to Roman times, which is essentially a sharpened hook that you would use in agriculture to trim grape vines. There are a whole bunch of pole arms that started out as agricultural implements. Right? Basically, in a feudal society, you had a lot of people who were farmers <laughs> to support uh, the other estates of society. And those farmers or peasants were really used to using these agricultural tools. Right? So you had things like bill hooks like this or the English bill. Uh, which are for essentially pruning and trimming crops. You had things like war scythes, right, which was a scythe for harvesting uh, grain, cutting down hay <laughs> or straw. And you had things like war forks, which were essentially pitchforks that peasants would use when they were called up. So throughout a lot of the Middle Ages, you didn't have big standing armies, right? You could call in uh, your peasantry, uh, if it was necessary, and they would bring whatever weapons they had. Now, by the 16th century, a bunch of these former agricultural tools had turned into highly specialized weapons, right? So rather than just being a little hand-held, uh, little scythe, basically, uh, you get this monstrous weapon, uh, which is excellent for foot soldiers to unhorse knights and kill people in heavy armor. So there are a number of important parts of an Italian bill or roncone, which they're also called. The first is this spike, right? So this is about half inch square uh, of steel. It's, uh, I think this is 14 inch long spike that tapers down to a fine point at the end of this blade. So this is essentially a spear or a pike. The hook right here allows you to parry incoming blows like a halberd does. Uh, and this hook is sharpened all the way around and comes down to a chisel point, which is great for grabbing someone on horseback and pulling them off and then you can stab them. Uh, these also have spikes on the back and down here at the bottom, which are sharpened. Right? They come down to very fine points, uh, which would help to tangle in the clothing uh, of someone you're fighting and also allow you to do a devastating back cut or to pull or push someone with this sharp edge. So this example of ours is based on a 16th century original. It's in the Wallace Collection. It is uh, Ascension number A930, uh, if you want to look it up. Uh, we've copied the proportions of it. That original has a little more decoration uh, on it, which we typically exclude uh, on this one. Uh, we make it out of quarter inch 1050 carbon steel, which is then, it's a little hard to see in this light, but hollow ground uh, in two lobes. So it is full thickness out at the back, and then we get two lobes of grinding on the blade here that lighten it up and leave a thicker portion at this front edge of the cutting edge, right? So this whole part uh, is a cutting edge, but it's thickened right here for impact with armor. Uh, on this particular example, it's a custom piece we made for someone. This one has langets on it that are about 18 inches long. On our normal offering, uh, we don't put langets on this. Uh, on the original, there don't appear to be langets. Uh, so sometimes they had langets, sometimes they didn't. We're happy to add langets uh, on these as a custom piece. This one also has a uh, butt, uh, butt spike, butt ball, <laughs> right? A butt cap on it, that's what we'll call it. Uh, which is another custom addition to this piece, uh, which we're 
in period. Sometimes they had them, sometimes they didn't. This isn't really a counterweight uh, to the head uh, so much as it's something that allows you to hit harder with the butt of this pole and it protects the wood when you ground it on stone or whatever, right? It kind of takes some wear and tear out of that part. So these are pretty awesome weapons uh, that derive, as I said, from agricultural implements. And we'll look at a few more agricultural tools turned military weapons uh, in upcoming episodes. But take a look at the piece. It's pretty sweet. It's through hardened, tempered. It's a really uh, devastating weapon. Thanks very much.